All right, welcome. We got this new idea going on here, Everyday AI with Ryan and Todd. Todd, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. So, Summertime. Summer, right? So that means we usually get a little bit of a break in the summer, but we've been working pretty hard on all sorts of craziness lately. What have you been up to? Uh, using all these uh, tools of that Everyday AI stuff to code stuff. Yeah, Todd's been really uh, hitting the coding side pretty heavily. He's I, I keep hearing about Replit and Claude and GPT and how they're all working. And I think we're going to get into some videos on those. As, as you notice, Everyday AI, we're going to try to do some practical AI stuff. And uh, Todd's really been hitting the coding side pretty hard. I've been looking at uh, more of the business and actually some deeper technical as well. Um, I don't know if many people know, Todd, I've been working on a master's degree in AI at uh, uh, and working through that. So right now I'm in natural language processing, which the math is insane. Um, <laughs> thank goodness for chat GPT and it can basically take all the equations and explain it to me like I'm a sixth grader. And that's almost dumb enough for me to get it. So, <laughs> but uh, working through um, a master's degree program, but I've also uh, have been looking at some offerings uh, around the around the different organizations and Todd I, I think I was we were talking a little bit about this I'm going to jump right into what I've been looking at um I've been looking at the project management institute yeah interesting you were telling me about this I'm excited to hear a little bit more and ask some questions about them well I have to say I'm really surprised right so this is uh I think it's unusual for either one of us to to talk about the PMI but uh what they've done and I think this is absolutely brilliant they've put together uh, five free courses. Um, and there's generative AI, data landscape, uh, talking to AI with prompt engineering, practical application of gen AI, and introduction to cognitive uh, project management in AI. So that is their larger methodology. That's the um, their take on how to manage an AI project. And, and Todd, I, I, as we were talking, it is excellent. Like they have put together really good material. And I thought it would be interesting to walk through these five and kind of discuss them. I think the first one up, the first one that I want to talk about, I think this is the one that will be most applicable to, to the most people out there, um, is talking to AI, the prompt engineering for project managers course. And so this is a PMI class. I actually think everybody should take this. Like Todd, I think it, it'd take you an hour to get through it. I think you'd really enjoy it. Um, I think everybody uh, should take this. It's really, how do you get the most out of these large language models? So if you're using ChatGPT or Claude, I've been using a lot of Gemini lately. I like Gemini quite a bit from Google. Um, Copilot, um, what are some of the other ones? Perplexity, like there's all sorts of different models and flavors and, and, and fill your boots, try them all, right? We hope you're using a lot of them. What the, what the PMI has done here is basically said, how do we teach people how to get the most out of these LLMs, but also from a project management standpoint? So it's kind yeah, of interesting. So I'm just, just curious if you could like maybe summarize, give me, give me a, like a good idea of what they were talking about in this course from a, like, what, just what's the biggest takeaway? Do you have a one big takeaway I've that you got, got from this one? I've got two. Right. So two huge takeaways. The first one, they gave a, a concrete formula for prompt creation. And, I, you know, everyone's got their own flavor of this. Right. I was really impressed with this. Um, it's the create uh, format. So character request examples, adjustments and constraints, types of output and then evaluation step and steps. And so it wants you to define the persona. It wants you to articulate the task or request clearly. It wants you to give examples, right? So if you have a spreadsheet of what the output should look like, or if you have a table that you wanted to populate, like adjustments and constraints are specifications to what answers are allowed, what aren't, how you would adjust ahead of the prompt being or of being executed. The type of output you're looking for. Do you want a PDF? Do you want an Excel sheet? Do you want an image? Uh, and then evaluation steps. Give it steps to validate as it's working through it, that it's actually built the prompt correctly. And I thought, I've never actually seen that last step in a prompt creation type of formula. And I thought it was really smart 
that self-evaluation. And I've been playing around with this, right? So I've been, you know, I, you and I have dug pretty deep into the prompting and, and how all this works. And then through courses, I've had to do prompting uh, with various uh, engines. I've started using this format and kind of tracking it against others. The results are really, really good. Like I've been very impressed with how it's coming out. Yeah, I'm interested with this, like how this would be applicable from a technical perspective, because that's my that's been my biggest perspective from a, from um, from AI approaching with that. And so, I mean, a lot of this, depending on where you are in the life cycle of things, some is like here is a um, you know here's a here's a controller I want to be able to write some integration tests against it, or here's a utility I want to be able to unit test it, stuff like that. And it'll, it does a really good job and it intuitively knows, but for more complex things, when you're like, I want to build a new feature, I have found it helpful to character, define the persona, right? Because I think with the ex true narrative IO experiment that we have, I was very, very specific there saying the type of people that would be using it and the expectations that they might have. So I feel like I feel like depending from a technical perspective, what you're asking it, that this would be applicable, like new feature, probably um, if you're doing some stuff and like refactoring and doing some architecture stuff, um, probably probably don't need as much of this. But um, from from the vantage point of the of, of, of the, the PMI from a business perspective, I think this probably makes sense in a lot of instances. Yeah, I think it could, too. Um, I think it could be really interesting. Um could be really interesting, especially from a coder perspective, right? So if you're a developer and and you're and you are, and, and perhaps you set a character like, you know, act as Kent Beck and tidy up this code base. And and you start I, and I just wonder if that changes the nature of the output, right? Yeah. Yeah. I that, that would be an interesting experiment or or like, um, you know, apply, make sure this applies, uh, you know, these principles. Or maybe you know, you um, have stuff in there like reference referencing books from like Uncle Bob and stuff like right. that. I wonder I wonder if that would change. That would be an interesting experiment to run. Yeah, use the Gang of Four design pattern book, and you know here are the adjustments. You must use this design pattern, and the type of output must be you know. And I I, I think it'd be in, maybe we'll do some videos looking at that. Look at the standard. Like here's a code base. You know, refactor it versus. You are Kent Beck. You are tidying up this code base. Here is the example of how we want the code to end up, and here, and right. actually seeing if there's a difference in in what ends up uh, in that refactored, uh, the, in that refactored code base. Yeah, that that would be a, that would be a really interesting experiment is to put it through the lens of somebody that in the industry is very well known for clean code. Yep. Yeah. So I, as you can see, it's, it's a, there's a lot of steps to creating the prompt, but what I have found is when I slow down and use this, I'm getting a lot better results, more specific and more applicable, which is kind of neat. I'm not getting the more generic uh, type of responses. So I liked that a lot. The other thing that I really liked and I was impressed by is that they have a lot of prompting patterns and a number of these I had not seen before. And so, you know, chain of thought, how you can chain thoughts throughout a series of prompts, chain of feedback, how you give it continuous feedback about its answers. There's trees of thought where you can tell it, um, here's the problem I have. I want you to take five possible solutions and take them out to their most logical conclusion. And it will do a tree like branches uh, simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, personas, this flipped interaction is where you have it ask you questions after you give it a detailed prompt. Um, you know, question refinement, you know, asking it to refine your question before it executes. Some of these, I certainly you've seen some of these, though, I thought were really interesting, right? It, you know, the pattern of risk assessment, the pattern of react, um, the, the self consistency, like actually putting in some prompt language that ensures that the, that the LLM is being consistent throughout the entire answer. You know, just some of these uh, these neat little twists. And so I, it was really interesting to see, you know, a number of these patterns. And I'll give an example. Um, what is one? I thought the flipped interaction example uh, was just really good. And I'd never seen it explained that way. And so I'm going through this class thinking, all right, it's the Project Management Institute. They're known for the PMP. And this is what we're going to get out of it. And instead, I mean, it was just... Uh, 
it was just really good. Awesome. I, I, I challenge accepted. I'm going to check it out now. Well, and then um, the last thing I would add there, you know, I did have an example here of the flipped interaction. And so you still put together a really uh, advanced and interesting uh, prompt. But then you just say, walk me through any questions you have. And I, I just, I really, I've done it where I've said at a very generic level, here's what I want, ask me questions. But just that combination of, um, of, the, of their format plus asking the questions, I just thought was really good. And so, like I said, I was uh, incredibly surprised at the depth. Uh, and this is a free course. Like you don't even have to, you don't have to be a member. You can show up if you have a login, you can take it. There's a good hour, maybe a little bit more of content. There's some questions at the end. Uh, you get a Credly badge with it. Uh, and so I, I just, I really enjoyed it. Like I was uh, thoroughly pleased with just how they did it. And I just thought, you know, if you're out there and you're looking for, you know, not everybody can go to grad school, right? It's, it's expensive, it's time consuming. But if you're looking for, um, some really good free resources. I mean, this this one for prompt engineering is at the top of my list. Cool. I guess I got to check it out now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I highly recommend it. I mean, I think you could take. I mean, you'll you'll pick these up pretty quickly, Todd. But I think for those people out there that if you don't quite feel like you're getting a lot out of the engines, out out of these, you know, I don't even large language models, right? Chat GPT, Claude. Copilot, Gemini, we, we always leave one out and someone's going to get upset. Uh, I think these patterns are helpful. I think these ideas are helpful. And the course through the course of that hour, I think you'll find you get some more applicability for the scrum people out there. If you're a scrum master, product owner, developer, manager, leader, executive, uh, it's worth the hour just to get more solid answers, right? There's, there's so much applicability here. Um, I know in our PSPO with AI course, our product owner with artificial intelligence course, we'll be incorporating these ideas into the course. We'll be pulling in these formats and these patterns and, and working with product owners uh, to apply these to product uh, management and their day to day. And uh, yeah, and, and we hope you'll do that, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's not coming anymore. It's here. So uh, I, I would suggest everybody put this stuff in their toolbox because the evolution that we've seen in the past 18 months is nothing short of astounding. Yeah. And maybe that's a good video that we should also do. Just have a real like down to earth. Let's let's have a real chat about what's happening here. Maybe we'll do that here in the in the future and just let's have a really level headed, no hype talk about what's here and what's coming next. But uh for now, highly encourage everybody, go out to the PMI, um, check out that prompting. Actually, check out all five. But the prompting course, I would start there. It's excellent. Let me know in the comments. You know, Todd and I would love to know, like, did you think it was helpful? Do you think we're crazy? Uh, we'd love to hear those thoughts. And uh, let us know. Do you have a favorite resource that you think is just as good or better? Drop that in the comment as well. I think everybody's yeah. trying to learn. You know, you and I, Todd, I think we talk about different things we find uh, all the time, like everybody's trying to learn and figure this stuff out. Yes, yeah, stuff that I mean, I think I was telling you, I'm messing around with stuff that came out in June, right? Like it's just uh, as as mentioning the evolution is is wild. It's exciting. Um, but so it's yeah, wild. be sure to like and subscribe so you don't uh, miss any of these videos. We're going to be talking a lot more about now that we've taken some time to dig in and learn. We're going to be talking a lot more about AI and its application to software development, product management, product development, and everything in between. Uh, so be sure to follow, make sure you stay in the conversation, leave us those comments. We love uh, getting your questions and comments. We may answer a few on a show, but for Todd, I'm Ryan, go forward, do some great scrum and AI and agile and traditional and all of those things, right? You know, there's no one way anymore. It's many ways. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you.